to the Senior Solutions Friday Agency Training Webinar. Uh, my name is Joe Johnson. Uh, I'm going to be your host today along with Jimmy Hernandez. And we got a special guest speaker from Security National Life, Adam Bersan. I'm going to bring him on in just a minute. We got just a, real, a couple of announcements. Uh, let's see. Well, that's just my cell phone number in case you need to give me a call. No one sees my screen. Now, Jimmy, you're seeing my screen now, right? I am. Honesty, awesome. integrity, transparency. Got it. All right. Our, we're going to bring on in just a second, guys. Uh, we're going to bring our on our special guest speaker, um, Market Sales Director Adam Bersan, who's going to go over some really good stuff with Security National Life. Just a couple of real quick announcements. One is that we're uh, moving into the Labor Day weekend. So, man, enjoy yourselves. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hopeful that that you're able to relax this weekend and you take Monday off. You don't do you don't think about work. You don't do anything, and you can do that comfortably without any regret. And what I mean by that is that I don't know about you, Jimmy or Adam, but like if I feel like I really haven't been putting in like 100% effort, if I really haven't been busting my my butt and I take a day off, I always have like a little, like I feel guilty, you know? So hopefully you had a really good week and you've really been busting it through the summer and you're able to just take this whole weekend off, not worry about it, don't even think about work and you have no regret, no guilt, and you just enjoy your weekend. Uh, I know I know I am. Um, and then just a real quick announcement, uh, Labor Day sale for final expense uh, uh, folders, new agent starter kit. If you need any of that, we're doing everything. If you put in an order this weekend, just contact me directly. We'll get your order in and everything will, we're waiving shipping costs, which will save you um, a ton of money. So if you need to reorder folders, business cards, brochures, flip charts, delivery notices, whatever you need, uh, do it this weekend by Monday and we'll get it out to you and there will be zero shipping costs. So those are my only announcements. Jimmy, do you have any announcements about anything? On my Monday evening webinar, being that it falls on Labor Day, that's going to be canceled this week. So we'll resume the following week. Um, so that's that's it for me. All right. Awesome. All right, Adam, give me one second. I'm going to send you over a message to make you the presenter. I always forget how to do this. So give me a second. Let's see. Make presenter. Okay. Adam, you should be seeing something that's going to pop up on your screen that you just need to click on and agree to be the presenter. All right, cool. We see All right. you. Let's see. I'm sorry. Give me one second here. Yeah, yeah. If you need to optimize it or whatever, I kind of see the like the presenter mode right now. There we go. Awesome. Jimmy, do you see that good? Yes, sir. It looks great. Awesome. Hey, how you doing? We're doing good. You know, I didn't give you a a, um, a big intro. I apologize. You want to take just a second uh, for those. Uh, on the senior solution sales team that don't know um, who you are, um, just do a, um, a quick intro. Yeah, that'd be fine. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks again, Joe, for having me on this morning. Um, my name is Adam Bersan. I'm a market sales director with Security National Life. Uh, I've actually, I've been in the final expense business for 18 years now. Pretty much my whole professional career uh, in insurance has been uh, around final expense. So I've been with Security National Life now for six years, and I handle majority of the Midwest. I do have agents throughout the entire country, but uh, majority of my business is from the Midwest, um, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Wisconsin, just kind of right in the middle of the country there. So, um, but anyways, um, now is a really good time. I'm really glad that Joe had invited me on today because uh, we have a lot of good stuff in the works here. 
at Security National Life. Uh, one of our largest contests of the year is actually beginning in a couple weeks. So uh, I do a Monday morning training. I was planning on doing this Monday morning too. So you guys can see it now. If you want to hop on Monday morning, I'm sure you'll get an email from me about it. But uh, yeah, I wanted to go over a little bit about Founders Month because this is a contest. Uh, I, I, like I said, I started here six years ago. I started in September of 2015. And when I was, they flew me out to the home office when they hired me and they were letting me know about this big contest that was about to start and they handed me this flyer and I just couldn't believe the type of bonus money you could earn. Um, all for just going out and doing what you'd be doing anyways, going out and writing business. Uh, but by choosing to write that business with us, it could benefit you with some pretty good bonus money. Um, I've handed out bonus checks over the years upwards of almost thirteen thousand wow. dollars and that's all over a five week period so we're talking about just five weeks focusing on us right as much as you can and it's going to pay off uh, we pay those bonuses out the middle of december uh, so actually they fly me out to the home office the beginning of december they'll hand me all the bonus checks and then I'll either meet up with the agents or they'll be in the mail to you, depending on where you're located. So, but, uh, but yeah, let me, let me get to that too. Um, now, Joe, I, I see the video. I know I, I put myself here on the, on the video. Is that taking up a whole bunch of the screen or can you still see the, uh, the presentation? Um, I see the white screen security national telesales training. And then your name at the bottom. Okay. It's taking up the whole okay, screen. All right. Okay, perfect. So yep. uh, let's see. I'm just going to minimize the screen. Hey, Adam, one real quick question. Yeah. I know that you handle the sure. Midwest, but since Senior Solutions, our headquarters is in Naperville, Illinois, any agents that are contracted through us even though they may be in Florida or let's say Texas, you, you still yeah, handle I would, their, yeah, I would be their contact. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I mean, it, the way we do things is a little bit different. We do have career agents. Those are primarily focused on my territory, but outside of that, IMOs we know are nationally recruiting. Um, it, it, yeah, that's fine. That that's okay. fine. So, um, so anyways, yeah, real quick, just I wanted to go over Founders Month, and then from there, we're going to talk about the lead program, and then I'm going to get into the, the uh, Joe wanted me to kind of explain the different methods of writing business with us, because we do have field sales, we also have telesales. So I was going to kind of get into the process and, and uh, how to submit business each way, and uh, and I'll do a quick demo of our uh, of our web application as well. So okay. you guys can kind of see, I think it's a very easy web app to run, uh, but there's just a few little things with it that if you don't do it correctly, you could get an error message at the end and that's the last thing that you want. So we'll get to that in a couple minutes. First, uh, let's talk about this Founders Month. Like I said, it's it's a huge contest. Um, I don't honestly, I don't know if there's another contest in the final expense market that's even comparable. Um, okay. So. Uh, there's, there's, uh, it's a five week contest. It's beginning on, uh, on Monday, September 20th, I believe is the date. Uh, and it will run for five weeks. So I believe it ends like right around the middle of October. So, uh, so I would recommend as an agent to do what you can to load up on leads, uh, order as many leads as possible, um, over. Well, for now, over the next five weeks or so, direct mail is going to take a good two to three weeks to come in. So I would recommend ordering now and that they should be coming in right around the time that the contest begins. Um, I actually did the same thing for myself. I don't get out nearly as much as I used to and personally produce, but I will be producing during Founders Month because these bonuses are awesome and I want to take advantage of it too. So um, so this is, this is last year's flyer. So it may not be a hundred percent accurate with this year's. They haven't released this year's 
brochure yet. I don't even have it. So, uh, but I'm pretty sure that all of these bonuses are going to be very comparable to, to what I'm showing you here. Um, so this is one way to earn a bonus. You'll notice, uh, pretty simple. Uh, this is just based off of annualized premium. We look at the numbers here over five week period. If you don't quite hit 5,000 in production, well, unfortunately you're not gonna earn a bonus, but you would earn a commemorative coin. It's just, it's a nice little gold coin that's got the company's logo, says Founders Month on it in the year. Uh, so 5,000 minimum to earn a bonus. And you'll see, I mean, 5,000 to 74.99, a hundred dollar bonus, all the way up to 40,000 or 2,500 dollar bonus. So you might be thinking, well, you were talking about these huge bonuses. I mean, that doesn't look like a $12,000 bonus. I mean, I got to write 40,000 to earn any kind of bonus, any kind of really big bonus. But that's not the case. Um, there's contests within the contest. Uh, this is kind of like the main way of earning a bonus. Uh, but the, the key to Founders Month is to consistently produce each week throughout the contest. Uh, because at the end of the contest, they choose two weeks. They choose a bonus commission week, and then they also choose a bonus production week. So the bonus commission week is where you get the really, really big bonuses. And let me see if I have a slide for that here. I, I, it doesn't look like I do. I'll explain it to you. Um, the way that it works, uh, they, they pick a week. They, they basically, they, they take uh, each week, they, they do a drawing. They, they throw the, the weeks in a hat. They pull them out, the number out, whichever number they pick, that's bonus commission week. And then they do the same for bonus production week. So bonus commission week, they count up your number of apps that you wrote that week. And the first app, you don't receive any additional bonus. The second app, it's a 25% bonus based off of the nine month advance. The second, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the third app, it's a 50% bonus based off of the nine month advance. Uh, the fourth app, a 75% bonus and five apps on, they're basically doubling your commission advance. So if you earned a $1,200 advance, well then five apps on, you're gonna get a $1,200 bonus on that one app. Each app on, you're gonna earn 100% of that commission advance. Wow. So, I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, it's, it's like having a 200% commission contract, really. Uh, right, so, you all know it, like the um they reveal like that's the reason why you're seeing it. it's important just to produce consistently the five weeks because the week that they're going to pick is going to be random correct yeah we don't know which week they're going to choose yeah so okay you could, okay you could, uh, and, and the, the purpose of that they don't want agents just uh piling up all their business and just submitting it like in the final week well right uh, yeah. we yeah we want the business to be kind of fluent throughout okay so uh, so that's why it's very important to be consistent with, with producing. Now the bonus production week, uh, they do the same thing, but what that does is it, it counts towards the production here on this column here. So let's just say that maybe you wrote 12,000 in premium over those five weeks, and then they chose one of your better weeks for bonus production week. Well, then that production is going to count towards these tiers here where if you write enough business, it could move you from say a $750 bonus to a thousand, even 1250. Uh, do you follow? Yeah, and what's typically is it, when you say double the, um, or the, the bonus, is it that week like last year, did they just like double it for the, for the week or you remember what they did? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that again? Well, let's say, let's say uh, for the bonus week, let's say that particular week they pick, I wrote, you know, $3,000 worth of business. Um, and I understand it's going towards your total production, but last year, did they just double the production or what was the, what was the, what was the bonus production? What was the percentage? Do you remember? Uh, 
Well, it's the same as the commission week. Uh, so so they'll, they'll, they'll count up the apps just like they did the commission week. And oh, each okay. app that you wrote that week, so it'd be a 25% bump on your production, 50% bump, 75% bump, and then 100% bump Got on it. your production. Okay. So that's how you can really easily move from, I mean, you could move from 12,000 to almost 20,000 if, if they choose the, the right week uh, to kind of bump you up a little bit there on the, the left side. All right, so those makes- are the big ways to earn bonus money. And again, that bonus commission week, that's, I mean, if they choose the right week, that's where you can really uh, earn some pretty good bonus money. And I mean, that's where, I mean, I had one agent a couple of years ago, he was consistently writing 10,000 in premium a week uh, towards this contest. So it, it really didn't matter which week they chose, uh, he was expecting to, to get a pretty good bonus. And wow. what's nice is that they pay the bonus out when they pay it out. I love that they pay it out in the middle of December. Uh, it's the end of the year. It's the holiday season. Uh, we always have more that we have to be spending money on, Christmas presents, everything else. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of extra money there at the end of the year. Uh, now, this is another way that you can earn additional money. And again, another reason why it's important to be consistent throughout. Uh, if you write five apps for three weeks, meaning five apps a week for three weeks, you would earn a $300 bonus. If you do five apps for five weeks, so five apps each week out of the five weeks, it would be a $500 bonus in addition. And then see this, I don't know because it's not gonna be a six week contest this year. We might just be cutting it off at the 500. Uh, it's it's gonna be a five week contest. So I don't believe okay. that there will be a, a thousand dollar bonus that they write five apps for six consecutive weeks. Got it. Uh, but. But still, again, just like I said, another reason to be consistent throughout. Um, so like I said, I mean, right now, I know a lot of people are gearing up for, uh, you know, a lot of people do the, the Medicare, the AEP and all that stuff. I think this is almost a reason to, to not get going on it quite yet. Uh, you can earn some pretty good money uh, in this contest. So take advantage of it. And like I said, just load up on leads, uh, direct mail, whatever sources you guys are using, just get as many leads as you can and go out and see people. And I think once you start writing with us, I think you'll like writing with us and you'll probably want to write more business with us. We're pretty easy to do business with. Um, And that kind of leads into, well, first we'll talk about the lead program and then I was going to talk about submitting business, but. Hey Adam. uh, Yes. I just wanted to announced to senior solutions jimmy's getting out of the office i'm gonna put an order in today y'all I, I can tell you this that um i i can easily write 10 grand a week so get ready um the only thing i have is in mid-october i have a whole week that i have two conferences i have to go to so i'm not gonna i'm gonna have four weeks but uh i'm still i'm still gonna kick some ass and take some names. So I'm going to put everybody on notice. I'm getting out of the office. So, yeah, sounds good, Jimmy. I got some leads too. I need to go run as well. <laughs> yeah, so I'm thinking, let's see, if I'm looking at the calendar. I'll have some competition. It'll probably run through the 22nd, I believe, of October. Okay. So, yeah, he might miss that last week. But, um yeah, write as much as you can. Hopefully, they won't pick that last week as uh, the big bonus week. I doubt they will. I, I'm assuming it'll probably be somewhere within the middle of the contest, but who knows? I mean, it just it's it's just kind of luck of the draw. Uh, now, another thing too, I guess before I get into the lead program, I wanted to mention too that they also have additional contests throughout where you will be notified. Um, If you're not on our social media, I would recommend to maybe add us on your Facebook or your uh, your LinkedIn uh, because they will announce the additional contests on those platforms before they'll even send the emails out to agents. Uh, Now, the the other contests, one of them, it's just kind of like a first, second and third place amongst the company. Uh, One week, they'll choose whoever the the top three agents are based on annualized premium for the week. And then another week, it'll be based off of number of apps submitted. So you might write very small policies, but a large quantity of them, you could end up 
coming in first, second, or third, regardless of how much premium you wrote. So, so like I said, just like I said, look forward to it. It's uh, it's a big contest, and mark on your calendar too that in February we kind of have like a Founders Month reboot, and we'll be doing the same sort of contest again. Um, it's not called Founders; it was it's called Launch. This year was launching to, to 2021. Um, so next year, of course, 2022. But the, that contest very similar to Founders, where you can really earn some good bonus money. So, awesome. uh, so just make note of that, so you know maybe if anything, mid, middle of January, start loading up on some leads. Uh, and one way that will make it a heck of a lot easier for you to consistently be able to purchase leads is our lead program. Uh, our lead program is the reason I came on board with Security National Life. It really is. Um, I was spending so much money on leads with my prior company. Uh, the last year I was there, I mean, I spent over $40,000 on leads. Uh, and the, the thing was when I first started at my prior company, this is back in like 2003, lead prices were a lot cheaper. I, I was getting direct mail leads for like 18 to $20. And by the time I left there, they were $35 a lead. So then it was costing me $700 a week to go to work, which is pretty, uh, pretty average. That's what most people that are doing consistent direct mail campaigns are spending. But with our lead program, you won't have to worry about spending that much. Um, we kind of look at it this way, like I put it here. We are willing to invest in you as long as you're willing to invest in yourself. Uh, and the way that that works, every time you write a piece of business with us, you're going to earn a 10% lead credit over and above your commissions. Uh, it's based off the annualized premium of the policy. So, I mean, you could write 30,000 in premium for the month, you would earn a $3,000 lead credit. And that's money that you can put into your marketing, into your business. Uh, now the lead credit can be used to pay for up to half the cost of your leads. And that's why I say, if you're willing to invest in yourself, we're willing to invest in you as well. Um, we kind of look at it as, as, as long as the agents have a little bit of skin in the game, they're going to be willing to maybe go out and work those leads a little bit harder. Uh, but I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, I even, I did this myself. I mean, I, I took 20 leads the other day and they were $35 a piece. I used my lead credit. And so 20 leads cost me $350. And I wrote one app yesterday. I was out in the field yesterday, wrote one app. It was an $800 commission right there. My leads were paid off and I, I made money on that deal. I made $450 profit after my lead costs. Now I have 19 more leads to work, just making a hundred percent profit. It's just unbelievable. So, um, but another way to look at it, you can double your production and your activity. Uh, lead credit. It gives you the ability to spend the same amount of money on leads that you're used to spending. But now you'll have twice as many people to contact because we will match whatever you're willing to, uh, to put into it. So, so if you're used to spending $700 a week for direct mail leads, well, keep spending that much. Now, if you're writing that business with us, that's going to get you $1,400 worth of leads. That would get you 40 leads to work every week. I mean, you're going to make a lot more money working 40 leads every week than working 20. And it would be at the same expense that you're used to, to spending. So that's why, like I, like I said, I mean, the, this, is, this lead program is the reason I came here. Um, I know how important activity is in this business and how important leads are. You got to have a steady flow of leads. And that's like the one common denominator. All of my top agents, they're not afraid to order leads on a regular basis. And they're all ordering direct mail leads and they're all out in the field working. Uh, I mean, you know, I'll be honest, you know, people worry about COVID and stuff. Uh, I was out in the field yesterday. I had no problems whatsoever. Um, I didn't have, uh, I didn't even have anybody ask me about a mask or if I was vaccinated or anything. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think uh, maybe there had been some resistance over the last year and a half with a lot of agents may, maybe being concerned about getting back out in the field. I think people are just kind of over it. 
Um, I had no problem out in the field whatsoever. It wasn't even brought up. So, um, and it, you know, as, as good as the tell sales has been over the last uh, year and a half, it's kind of helped weather the storm here. I'll be honest, persistency, it's not as good. It's not as good as going out and actually seeing the people. So, you know, it's great to write the business over the phone, but if the person's three states over, it's kind of hard to go out and conserve the business too if it falls off. So, um, so that's kind of where we're at. I mean, we have telesales, it's available. Uh, at the end of the day, I just, I think the quality of business going out and writing it and seeing the people face to face is just going to be, be better. Uh, yeah, I agree. And I'm glad, I'm glad you're bringing that up. Um, you know, I, I, I'm with you on that, man. I mean, it's nice to be able to do, you know, have the telesales in your back pocket if you need to use it. If you have a, you know, a, a, a lead, whether it be direct mail or whatever lead source you're using, if they're hesitant, uh and you need to do it over the phone it's great that you could do it but i'm with you man just go out business as usual go see the people and uh write write as many apps as you can yeah you know i hate to say it but i mean i i have proof i mean my region's persistency has always been since i started here the highest in the company and right now our persistency is is the lowest it's ever been uh, and it's because of the tell sales. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Uh, you know, it's because of the tell sales. I have some tell sales agents whose persistencies are, you know, in the 50s and 60s, uh, where the field sales ones are close to 90. Yeah. So it just it makes a difference. Uh, that's where, like I said, if you're if you're uh, if you're willing to get out there, people are willing to see you. Um, I had no resistance whatsoever out in the field yesterday. So. Uh, but back to the lead program, uh, again, you receive lead credit on every single piece of business that you write. Uh, lead credit, it does not expire. So once you earn it, it's yours. Uh, it will cap at $4,000, though. The purpose of lead credit is to use it. It's not to just collect it. It's to use it. Once you get that lead credit in, I'd recommend right away turning around and placing a lead order. Uh, Lead credit also does not charge back. It used to, we changed that about a year ago. Um, it used to charge back. We no longer charge back lead credit. Once it's yours, it's yours. But with that said, now it does take 14 days from the day your policy is activated to receive lead credit on that piece of business. Uh, and that's just because we don't wanna pay lead, lead credit on a policy where the initial draft NSFs. So, so that's why we have the 14 days before we, we pay the lead credit out. And I have no problem with that. Um, and once you consistently are writing business, you're gonna have that lead credit trickling in every day anyways. Uh, now you must produce at least one application over the last 30 days in order to use your lead credit. So once you write a piece of business, then you can use the lead credit. It, it's, a, it's a bonus for writing business with us. So. As long as you write at least one app a month, you can use your lead credit. You do have to maintain 70% or greater first year persistency. Uh, and again, I mean, our, our rates are very good. Uh, I haven't had one policy of my own business replaced in the six years that I've been here. Uh, so I'm very confident to say that if you're consistently writing business, there's no reason your persistency should be anywhere near 70%. Uh, only people I see who are even anywhere around 70, maybe those telesales agents I was talking about, or people who are just maybe writing an app here or there. I mean, if you write five apps over three months and three of them fall off, well, that's going to put you under 70%. So uh, now you can check your lead credit on SNL's website. And what's nice is that you're able to contact the lead vendors directly. The only part that we're involved in is helping you pay for the leads. You contact the lead vendor directly, you place the lead order yourself. Um, we do have a list of preferred lead vendors. I don't have that slide on here today, but if you go to my website, um, I don't know if there's a, yeah, there's a chat box on here. And, and we use, I mean, most of our agents are using Need a Lead, which I know is on your list. Okay. So, um, 
unless you know of any other good ones. I mean, that's the one I would recommend unless for some reason need a lead, you know, just did a drop for another agent in that certain area and they can't produce yep. leads and you want to, you know, check with another vendor. But that would be our first go to is need a lead. Yeah, I like Needle Lead. I actually, I just placed an order for myself with Needle Lead the other day for 30 leads. Um, like I said, I'm getting ramped up for for that Founders Month. So um, what I, that's what I like about Needle Lead. Needle Lead, they'll do that price per lead, where you don't have to do a thousand piece mailer and be kind of sitting there with your fingers crossed, hoping that you get a good return. You can order 20 leads from them and expect 20 leads to come back to you. Uh, or like I said, I ordered 30 leads, but it was great with lead credit, 30 leads cost me $480. So same thing, one sale is gonna pretty much cover that and I'm gonna have 20 more, nine more leads to work. Awesome. Uh, so you can notify them again and just, you gotta make sure, and lead credit, or I'm sorry, need a lead is, they're very helpful. They have a, a really good, and if you guys are using them, you probably know this, they, they have a really good lead management system, makes it real easy to order leads through them. Uh, you don't even have to pick up the phone and call and place a lead order. You can do it all through their website. Um, but I would recommend if you haven't, I would call them and just let them know that you're an SNL agent and they'll make sure to set you up correctly with the different payment methods. They're, they'll set you up with a payment method to use uh, a credit card, your own credit card, and then they'll also set you up with the payment method, which would be SNL lead credit. So then when you're placing an order, you'll put how much money you're putting on your credit card, and then you'll put how much you have in lead credit that we will be paying. And then of course, we'll verify to make sure that it's accurate. And as long as it is, uh, we'll pay our part, you would be charged your part. And within two to three weeks from need a lead, you'd have those leads coming in. So like I said, with that contest starting in a couple of weeks, I'd recommend uh, getting a hold of them right away to get some orders placed. Uh, if you're a brand new agent, you may not have persistency calculated yet. Uh, and it might show on the website that you cannot use lead credit, but that's an inaccurate statement on the website. Persistency takes up to 90 days to begin to calculate for a new agent from the time they wrote their first piece of business. So if you're a new agent, regardless of what it says on the website with persistency, uh, you can use your lead credit. Just wanted to let you guys know that. Very good. So let's talk oh, about, and, uh, yes, Just sir. real quick, can you go back to that screen? I just want to get clarification on something. Sure. Okay, number three, it says there'd be a $4,000 cap on your lead credit. What I guess the clarification is, is that what you're saying is you can't bank more than four thousand. Correct. Yeah. But you once, can earn. I mean, if you're constantly using it, there's no limit on how much lead credit you can earn over the year. You just can't. You can't like just bank it like vacation days, as an example. They put a cap on it. So, just the way it's written, it almost sounds like like there's a cap on at four grand. Yeah, no, I mean, you could write 200000 in premium for the year and you would earn 20000 in lead credit. Got it, yeah, um, okay. It's just, it's just that you're not going to earn 20000 in lead credit if you're not using it. Um, exactly, okay. You could be capped at 4000 You got it. If you're, as long as you're using that lead credit, you're going to continue to earn it. Got it, yeah. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thanks. Sure. So, uh wanted to talk a little bit about the different ways of submitting new business and this would be for telesales but it can also be for in-home sales uh we have a couple different processes uh well for one for new business of course you can always write a paper app if you're writing business out in the field you can write a paper app and you can uh you can scan that and you can upload that in our agent portal i mean that's the the simple easy kind of old-fashioned way uh, you can also use our web app and our web app can be used for telesales or it can be used for I'm sorry it can be used for in-home sales or telesales and the process is pretty simple I would recommend using our web app for telesales over Aptical. Uh, Aptical we have partnered with them 
Uh, we primarily use them for after hours. Uh, as long as the home office is open, I recommend using the, the web app and using that method. The optical method, it is a completely paperless process. Uh, you don't have to submit anything to the home office when you're using optical. Uh, you would have to complete a paper application like it says here, but that's just for your own reference uh, because you're going to want to fill out that app before you call in the Aptical. You're going to have to provide all the information on that application to Aptical before they do the, the phone verification. So, But then from there, you don't have to submit that paper app. Aptical pretty much just types everything in and then they submit it to the home office. But with that said, it's a very lengthy process. Uh, that call with Aptical being that they are completing out, I'm sorry, that they're completing every single box on that application. I mean, it, it could be a 35 to 40 minute phone call. So it's kind of more of like a last resort. I prefer using the method where we use the web app. We submit that web app and once it's submitted, we would uh, call into the home office to do a phone verification. Now, you can still use that method even if the home office isn't open. The home office will just contact the client back once they open the next day to do the phone verification. Uh, now, for telesales though, I prefer to get it done while I'm there. I don't want the home office to have to call the client back. So that's when usually maybe I would use Aptical. Uh, or if I am gonna use the method where we're gonna get in touch with the home office, I might just let my client know that I'm going to call them the next day to do the phone verification. I'll call you, I'm going to give you a call first thing in the morning, and then we'll call into the home office to get that phone verification done. Because I, I would prefer to be in control than have to depend on the home office. Not necessarily depending on the home office, I guess more depending on the client. I, I don't want to have to depend on my client to answer their phone because they may not. But if I'm in, in control, at least then I know that we're going to get it done. So, so if you're completing one after regular business hours, just remember that. Uh, you'll have to either call back in the next day to do the phone verification with the client, or you can just contact Aptical and get it, get it done right then and there. Um, now, for in-home in, uh, in sales out in the field, uh, last night, I wrote that one application. It was after business hours. It was like 6.30 at night. Uh, I just filled out a paper app. Uh, the person was in very good health. They were taking one medication that was just for allergies. And I saw no reason to even bother with filling out the web app and calling back to do the phone verification. You don't have to do a phone verification on a paper app. So I submit the paper app. Today, it's more than likely going to get issued, and uh, the only time the client would be contacted would be if for some reason uh, that application goes from preferred to modified, and then I would have to notify the client of the changes. But in a situation like last night, I was very confident that person was in very good health. I'm not worried that it's going to get switched to modified, and I'm uh, pretty confident that it's going to get issued today, and I didn't have to take all these extra steps with uh you know with filling out the web app or doing the phone verification so so those would be the three different methods uh like i said whether you're uh doing telesales or out in the field and i'll go ahead i don't know how long your calls usually go joe but i was going to go ahead and run that web app real quick so you yeah, guys can see yeah, yeah. That, i mean we're getting it recorded so if agents need to drop off they can drop off i'm gonna okay um eat or um not email, I'm gonna text everybody a link so they can view it later. I, I do, you'll probably cover this, but I just wanna, cause I, I'm taking notes as you're doing your presentation. I'm okay. glad the, the fact that if, a, if an agent decides to do a paper app, they don't have to worry about a phone verification. So my question is, is that with the, if I have my laptop or a tablet, whether I'm in the home or I'm doing telesales, if I, if I am, taking the app on the on the agent portal at the end am i just am i just asking the client the questions or at some point is there a, a uh, some type of signature verification i need to get from the client 
on the web app, uh, it's strictly just a voice signature. Um, that's that's basically what we call that. Um, by by calling in and doing the phone verification, they verify uh, that the person wants to take out the policy just by speaking with them. Okay. All so, right. So that's it. Nothing has to be signed. No ink signatures or anything. Well, I got a question for you. Sure. As an agent, you've written a lot of business with Security National. Have you ever had a situation where, you know, it was after hours or whatever? Maybe, maybe you had a poor internet connection. You just couldn't do. You couldn't get onto the agent portal. You're with the client face to face. So you went ahead and did a paper application. You got all the signatures. But then, if the client's available, why couldn't you just? Take, since you have all the information, just load it into the agent portal, call the client and get a verification and just get it approved on the spot. Like that day or the next day? The next day or whenever. Um, well, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like maybe those are just a few extra steps that you don't have to take if sure it's is. after hours. Well, um, I'm just saying if you don't want to, if you don't want to have to submit because i'm assuming if you submit a paper app a, there's a you're not going to get an instant decision there's going to be a little bit more of a turnaround not a whole lot though okay um, our business cutoff time is 11:30 a.m central so as long as the business is submitted before 11:30 a.m central it'll be processed that day and more than likely it'll be issued that day regardless of which method that it's being submitted. Um, if an agent did so, want to do that, is there any legal or is there any, um, I guess my point is that we don't want to do anything wrong against Security Nationals, your, your internal regulations. If an agent wanted to take all the information and then upload it, and let's say do the phone verification the next, like the next day, because they couldn't get onto the portal. Are you guys okay with that? Uh, I, I think in a situation like that, their best bet would probably be to just do the paper app and okay. upload it and okay. submit it. Um, they, they do legally, they, they do want the app done at the point of sale. Fine. Okay. I just, I just want to find out because I know with sure. um, other agents have done that with other carriers where they wanted to do an e-app but they couldn't because of logistics so they did a paper app and then they uploaded it you know the next day did the phone verification got it approved so um, moving on I'll let you I'll let you yeah, move forward with your you presentation. Sure one thing I would recommend though is uh, if you're doing an app on somebody that's using a lot of uh, dual purpose medications. Uh, for instance, one of the big ones I'll run into a lot is like uh, neuropathy or they're, like they're taking, they're taking gabapentin, uh, but maybe they're not taking it for neuropathy. Maybe they're just taking it for like back pain. Uh, well, uh, the web app, there's a possibility that it might just come back modified. Uh, where if you do a paper wrap and they can see at the home office that that person is taking gabapentin for back pain, well, then they would issue it preferred. So I usually recommend if there's a lot of dual purpose meds, uh, your best bet might be to just submit the paper app and have the human eye look at it. Okay, that's so, a good tip. Just so you guys know. Okay, so I'm in the agent portal. The Web address is just agentportal.securitynational.com. And then uh, and then you'll see uh, under new business, there's uploads. That's where if I do a paper app, I can click right there and then I can just drag the file over there that I used, uh, that, I, that I scanned, that you know, I scanned the file or however you saved your PDF and you can upload it right there. Uh, we also have the rate cake calculator there and then the telesales. Now, I wish we changed this icon to say something different than telesales because this is the web app that can be used for either telesales or anything else. But right. anyways, we, we would click that link 
and that's going to take us to the web app. There's just a long disclosure here that you have to go through, and I'm not going to read all that now. Just simply click I agree and then move on. I think it just basically states that you did talk to the client and that they're there and you're writing the policy on the person who they say they are. Uh, from there, we just start filling out the app. So pretty simple. I mean, I'm, I'll just do a sample app. Uh, and then we'll just make up a, a birthday. And then we will put it in the signed state. The zip code and then the social. One thing too, I, I think you guys may know this, but we do accept the ITIN number as well. So if somebody doesn't have a social, you can still write it with us in that box there where you would plug in the social, you would just put in their ITIN number. Good information to know. And then the height and weight, I'll just put six foot, 200 pounds, and desired coverage, we'll just do 20,000 and continue. So one thing uh, I wanted to mention, this is very important. You never want to hit the back button in your browser when you are doing a web app with us. If you hit the back button in your browser, if you made some sort of error or mistake, you may have to start over. Unfortunately, if you hit that back button, it's going to mess up the whole thing. So once you start, it's just kind of like you have to finish. I think there might be some back buttons as we proceed here. Okay, so you can see here on the right-hand side, we can go back and make adjustments if we need to to certain things here. Yeah. By, by, by going to the portion of the app where we need to get to. You don't want to hit the back button in the browser. Like I said, if you do, you'll get a user error at the end. Um, and that's, if you get the user user error, more than likely that's why. The only other time I've seen a user error is if the person's taken like 30 medications and, and you plug in all those meds and the system just kind of like overheats or something. So <laughs> okay. um, <laughs> um, in a situation like that, I'd recommend maybe just listing maybe like seven or eight meds and then maybe put in the notes section that you'll you'll submit over the additional meds in an email or something. So let's see, I'm just do 1050 Park Lane, uh, Joliet, Illinois, Birth State, Illinois. And as you can see, everything is pre-populated from the prior screen where I had already inputted that information. And then phone number, Email. Now, not all of our clients have email addresses, especially a lot of the seniors in that. So if, uh, if they don't have an email, you just need to put something in there that has an at sign and a period. So I'll usually just put like none at none.com. Oh, and that's perfect. Fine. That's a good tip to know. So you need to put something yeah, in even if they don't have one. Exactly. You got to put something there, but it's a, it, that's good enough to proceed to the next step. Okay. Now, if the owner is different than the insured, then we would fill in the owner's information here. If the owner is the insured, we would just simply click the blank spot here next to here and it'll switch over to insured. And then you can see all that information and then I don't have to retype it in. Same okay. thing with the payer information. If the payer is the insured, we would just hit here and slide it over all that information pops back up so we don't have to retype everything in. Awesome. And then we can add beneficiaries, mark, test, and that is uh, a sibling, and that's the primary beneficiary. We don't have to fill in all these, this other information unless you really want to. You don't have to plug in the address or phone number. It's not a bad idea to get that information though because I know sometimes you can get referrals that way by maybe contacting the beneficiaries and kind of let them know what you did. So we can hit save there. We can add another beneficiary. Uh, 
Uh oh, what's going on here? Okay. And same thing, we'll just do sibling, and then we'll make Jill the contingent beneficiary and save. Okay. So now you can add as many beneficiaries as you want. I like to keep it simple. I usually just keep it at one primary and one contingent, um, make it less confusing. So now you'll notice all the questions are pre-selected to yes. So then same thing, if, if it's actually no, then you would just click it and it'll switch to no. And I'm just gonna do that all the way down. Yeah, easy enough. Yeah, so section one, health questions, section two, section three, these are just all health questions. Um, if anything in section one is answered yes, they would not qualify. Section two is the, the insulin diabetes question that would put it to standard with us. And then section three, would put it to modified if anything is answered yes. So if everything is answered no here, it will give us a decision at the end that they qualify for preferred. But that is also before we uh, talk to the people at the home office and do the phone verification. So it's not, it's not like a guarantee that if everything's answered no here that it's gonna be preferred. It would be based off of the prescription check as well after we get off the phone with them. So medications, uh, I'll just put one in here. Lisinopril, they've been taking it for five years for high blood pressure, 10 milligrams once a day and save it. Doctor's information. Is that required uh, primary physician? Uh, if they don't have a primary physician, I would just put wherever they would go for like an emergency. Okay. Uh, we don't look into medical records or anything like that. It's only to speed up the claim process. Well, I guess the uh, it's required to put something in there, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, it's required to put something there. Like I said, it speeds up the claim process because sometimes that, that's where there's a delay in the claim process is if the doctor is taking his time with, signing off on the death certificate. So if we have that information, even before the claim papers are submitted, we can get in touch with the doctor if we have that information here. So that's the only reason we ask for it. Got it. So, and again, I know it's, it's an extra step with that and also listing the meds, but it is what it is. Uh, I, the, the main reason we ask for agents to list the medications is because of those dual purpose medications. <clears throat> if someone's taking a medication that could be used for high blood pressure or congestive heart failure, we wanna know which. So that's why we ask, the more information the agent provides on the app, the higher the likelihood that that piece of business will be issued the way that they're hoping that it, it will be, or the, 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 the way that they want it to be issued. Awesome. So bank information, credit card, you'd switch it over here. If it's a credit card, you can list the credit card information there. Remember credit card business or debit card business is paid as earned. There's no deduction in commission, but we don't advance on it. Uh, bank draft, you just plug in the, the bank, Chase Bank. Here, you don't have to put a full address. You could just put a city if you'd like. I'll just put Joliet, Illinois, checking account. All right, and then routing number. All right, and then let's see. Accidental death and dismemberment, I'm sorry, just accidental death benefit, yes or no? Uh, I usually just add it. I usually just double it. So if I'm doing 20,000 for natural causes, I'll usually add the 20,000 for accident as well. Uh, and that's accidental death, death benefit for the life of the policy. Child rider, yes or no. Uh, child rider, I believe they can, it's just, it's a small rider. I think it's up to 10,000 and it's just for children. It's not for grandchildren. So 
not many scenarios where I even have to put anything there because not many of my clients have kids under the age of 18. Uh, no, the billing information, are they on social security? Yes or no, that helps with the social security billing. And then we can either choose a specific date or a specific day. So a lot of our clients, they get paid now with social security on the second, third or fourth Wednesday. So we can set the, set the draft that day, that way. We can set it for either the second, third or fourth Wednesday, or we can set it for a specific date, such as the first or the third of the month. Uh, so I could do October 3rd as the initial, or the, the draft date. If I check draft upon approval, then it's gonna draft that October payment right now. And then they're not gonna take another payment until November 3rd. Okay, uh, as long as it's within 30 days, that's that's what they'll do. Okay, that's good to know. And then uh, replacement, do they have existing coverage? You'll notice with that question being answered yes, there's a replacement form right here in the web app. Uh, it, once we switch that to no, that, it's, that, uh, that maybe they do have existing coverage, but it's not replacing, you'll notice that replacement form will disappear. Uh, and Perfect. then the only, I want to point out here, the agent statement, a lot of times agents will miss this question number three, and then they'll have to go back and fix it. Um, is the proposed insured an immediate family member? Yes or no? Uh, that's just for commission purposes. We're not going to advance commission on an immediate family member. So uh, that's why they asked that question. And then just, yes, I certified that I saw the insured, they verified their identity with me, I asked all the health questions. And then from there, you would just type your name in. And then this is the prescription authorization. As you can see on here, applicant signature, phone verified. So once I hit submit here, I'm not going to submit this because I don't want the home office to actually try to process this. But uh, once we hit submit, we would there would be a pop up that comes up with the phone number to call in to do the phone verification. Uh, and then it, you'll also have the option to save a copy, a PDF copy for your for your own records. Do you get like so a code kind of, or something, Adam? Like when you hit submit, do you, do you get a pop up with like a um, a code or when you call into the home office you just give the client's name how do they how do they know who you're calling about uh you know what uh it's like it's submitted in real time and when you call in uh just let them know who you are and who the insured is and they just look it up oh okay all right so there's no there's no special like code or anything no no nothing okay. like that yeah just you just call in to the home office uh option one for new business and then option one again for telesales phone verifications got it that's it it's about a five minute phone call they they don't re-ask the health questions which i love because i know some of those phone verifications can go go pretty long uh i, I remember one company i was writing business with i mean it was a good 20 minutes i was on the phone because they were asking every single question again uh all they ask the client on our phone verification, they'll ask them their uh, their birthday, they'll ask them their height and weight, uh, they'll also ask them, uh, they'll verify their address with them, and then they will, uh, they'll read the prescription authorization to them, and they'll get their authorization to run the script check, and then they'll also uh, verify their banking information with them, just to make sure everything's correct there, and that's okay. it. So it's about a five minute phone call. They run the script check and then they'll provide the decision at the end, whether it would be, uh, you know, preferred or if it's going to switch to modify. Awesome. And then from there, the insured can either accept it or if they don't mm -hmm. accept it, I guess then we're just going to have to do what we can to try to conserve it and sell the modify. So, awesome. I mean, this is it. exactly what I was looking for. I don't know if you have more to cover. I, as you were doing this, I wrote down like four or five questions. Do you want okay. me to? Yeah, that's, this is about all I had, so. Okay, perfect. All right, so here's my questions. One is, is that when you're 
when I'm on the agent portal and I'm loading up the client's information, it asks me, um, there's a question in the beginning about their height and weight. Okay, if I don't have um, the, like the, the, your height and weight chart handy, you know, let's say the client is, you know, 5'5", 350 pounds as an example. Is there a is there a default in the portal that will automatically say, like once I go through everything, it'll, it's before I even do the phone interview, say, hey, this client, you know, is ineligible or would be, you know, modified due to height and weight? Uh, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if the height and weight is too high, uh, or if the weight's too high based on their height, uh, yeah, it won't proceed to the final step. Okay, perfect. Okay. My next question is, is that you referred to doing a, um, a pharmaceutical check, check. Are you guys only doing an RX or do you run an MIB as well? Uh, no, we do not run an MIB. Um, everything is awesome. based off of the prescription check and, uh, and the questions on the application. Uh, okay. we, we really underwrite so much just based off of the medications that the person's taking. Uh, you know, one thing too, we, we, we can see what kind of doctor prescribed that medication. So that's one thing when we're listing the dual purpose meds, when the home office is looking at it, I mean, if anything comes up and there's any red flags, I mean, if, if we see someone's taken five blood pressure medications, but they were prescribed by a cardiologist, well, there's a possibility that it might be more than just uh, high blood pressure that we have to worry about. So uh, we can find out so much just based off of the uh, the RX that we don't feel the need to run an MIB. Well, that, you know, that's good because sometimes, um, you know, MIBs can be inaccurate and, you know. Um, yeah, the other I agree. Question, you've been there for six years. Um, on um, your talk, you had mentioned about getting physicians information to pay death claims on average. If... Um, if if we do have a death claim, are you guys pretty quick as far as paying out claims? Uh, I think we're probably one of the quickest in the industry. Okay. Uh, we know that the purpose of these policies is to cover a burial and a funeral. That's something that needs to be done quickly. We know that the family, they don't have money to pay the funeral home. So we we pay claims within 24 to 72 hours from the time all all necessary documentation is submitted to the home office. Got it. Uh, okay. The only time it's going to take longer than that is within the first two years when that claim is contestable. Uh, and we're going to have to go through doctor's records. I mean, it, again, it, that it makes it, sense. That, I mean, that's with, with any that. carrier. Yeah. yeah. Even with that, though, I mean, I've seen us pay a claim in 10 days. Uh, as long as that, it's just a matter of how fast the they first, are getting the In the first two years. Assuming yeah. it's, it's, let's say it's in the third or fourth year, the contestability period's over, usually uh, death claims are paid within a couple of days? Yeah, within 24 to 72 hours. The awesome. only time it's not going to be 24 hours is if, uh, is if that person died on a Saturday or a Sunday. And uh, <laughs> we don't have any, we're not able to get a hold of anybody at the home office. So okay. you know, they're very fast with, uh, with paying those claims on the non-contestables. Okay. And then the other question I have is um, when you were doing the, the mock application, you entered in the, um, the accidental death benefit. Um, does it always, does, does the accidental death benefit always need to be the same as the face amount or it can be higher or lower? It can be less than, but the max is, it has to uh, equal whatever the, the face amount is for natural causes. Got it. Okay. And then my last question, which is not really a question, but just a confirmation, because I already know the answer. I think I know the answer is you guys, Security National does true social security billing, correct? Uh, yes. Yes. So uh, if, for instance, I was just looking at the calendar and the 3rd of October is on a Sunday. So our clients, uh, well, they're going to get their social security on the first. If the, even if they usually get it on the third, 
they're going to get it on the first, which is a Friday. Uh, we'll actually draft that payment on Friday uh, when we know that they received their social security deposit. We're not going to wait until Monday because if they got that money on Friday, I don't want them to go out and spend all their money. And then there's no money to pay their premium on Monday. Yeah. So no, yeah. we'll pay it. Uh, we'll take it when we know that they received it. Perfect. Um, Jimmy, do you have any questions? No, I just want to send like some, uh, some kudos out to you, Adam, you know, you kind of remind me of me. <laughs> it, what I mean by that is uh, when I'm training and I'm working with agents, I tell them all those little details, the little tips when it comes to like, okay, in this situation, you're going to go with paper, this situation you go with, you know, the e-app. And so you kind of, that, 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 that really just shows me that you are in the field and you have hands-on experience and and that's why you're able to speak to that. So many reps that we get out there, internal wholesalers, you know, they, they, they just know it from like, let's say book knowledge. They really don't know the day-to-day -day workings and how, you know, all the little details are. So I, I, I can, re I really appreciate that. So that's really cool. Hey, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm all about leading by example. Um, I love going out in the field. You know, I love going out in the field and seeing people. I don't think I'll ever completely get away from it. Um, and at the end of the day, I look at it as I work for you guys, you know, so, you know, I got to do what I can to help and support you guys and make sure that you know what you're doing and make your lives as easy as can be out in the field. Uh, Absolutely. and when you run into certain scenarios, you, then you know how to handle them. So, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty thorough with my training, but it's just to make the, your guys' lives easier <laughs> once you're out in the field using us. Awesome, buddy. Awesome. Well, it's nice to have somebody that... Uh, like what Jimmy said, you know, so many of the, the people that we work with with different carriers, uh, you know, you can just tell that that person has never sold a policy in their life. You know, they have the book knowledge and a lot of product yeah. knowledge, but they just don't know. Um, talking to you, it's great because, you know, you've been doing this almost 20 years and it, it shows with the way you present the information. Oh, well, thank you um all right man well thanks for being on everybody have a great weekend and uh god bless and take care hey thanks right. again uh, right, yeah thank have you, a great man. weekend and uh thanks for having me on joe appreciate it take all care. right man thank you so much thanks. this is awesome bye-bye